So the NHL has been talking about doing another expansion here, but I'm not going to be doing Salt Lake today. No, we're bringing back the Quebec Nordiques, one team that a ton of people want to bring back. So of course, I got to make this a bit of a challenge. I have five years to win a Stanley Cup. And of course, if we want to be competing for Stanley Cups, we got to add superstars. And where is our first superstar going to be coming from? Well, of course, the St. Louis Blues, a team that's just completely full of superstars. And who is going to be the captain of this great Quebec Nordiques team? And the first player selected, Alexi Torpchenko, play some gritty bottom six minutes. He shows a lot of heart on the ice. The dude's an absolute beast, and he's going to be the face of the franchise. Now, I'm not going to be showing every single selection here because then it would take forever. But you know what? There's going to be a ton of great players available. Maybe not from the Anaheim Ducks, but we will get some good players today. And we're going to be getting a massive pickup early on here. We're going to be securing Jeremy Swayman away from the Boston Bruins. They got to protect all marks, so that means he's he's going to be available for selection. So that's going to be the second superstar we're drafting today, but he's obviously the first is Torpchenko. The man's a St. Louis legend, even though he really hasn't been here that long, but he's the face of this Quebec Nordiques franchise. And before we get any further into the expansion draft, I want to thank you guys for 55k, but we're not done here. The Detroit Red Wings still have more YouTube subscribers than me, and now we got to set a new goal for February, and that's going to be 60,000 subs by the end of the month. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Now we're also going to be getting a great backup goaltender now that we have our starter in Jeremy Swain. Wayman. Dustin Wolf is available for selection here, and you already know I'm going to be picking him. That's going to be a nice addition from the Calgary Flames here. We already got our goaltending tandem, but we will be picking up one goaltender a bit later. Who that's going to be, haven't decided yet. Now, obviously, we're not going to be drafting a ton of superstar players, but Sam Gerard is available here. He might not be a superstar yet, but he's definitely going to develop into one on our team. He's going to be playing some number one pairing minutes for us. He's going to get a lot of ice time, and I can guarantee he develops into a minimum an 89 overall, maybe even a 90. All right, we might be making some changes here because Spencer Knight is available. Do we do a tandem of Spencer Knight and Jeremy Swayman? Because that could be the move. We'll have two of the best young goaltenders in the league on our team. However, there are some other players available here. We could go with Forsling. He's 27 years old and 85 overall. Two years left on his contract. And although Spencer Knight would be a fantastic goaltender for us, we don't need two superstar goaltenders. So Forsling, welcome to the team. With the New Jersey Devils, not a lot of thoughts going into this selection right here. It's going to be Tyler Toffoli. We have him under contract heading into next season, but I don't plan on playing him next season we're going to be trading him away for some good young pieces I will say right now defense is not going to be a problem on this team we've picked up so many amazing defensemen scoring however yeah we might be in a bit of trouble here then again I could draft a guy like Tarasenko and then immediately re-sign him uh, Capo Caco is available here I'm going with Capo Caco if I give him some opportunities on the top six he'll develop into a stud so when it comes to defensemen we're set we're picking up Eric Chernak as well I think the lowest overall defenseman on our team is going to be like an 83 the forwards however yeah, we're going to have a couple 70 overall players. Now that I've moved on to the Toronto Maple Leafs, I'm really considering Ryan O'Reilly. That's what I'm doing. And then with the $27 million in cap space we have, we're bringing him back to the team. So with our final pick, we can go with Alex Iafalo here, and he's going to finish out the team. I actually think we drafted a pretty solid NHL team. I don't think we're going to be winning a Stanley Cup this season. I don't even think we'll make the playoffs, but we're definitely going to be a competitive team. That's for sure. All right, so I'm willing to craft up a massive package here to get the first overall pick. It's going to be the third overall, the 36, a second rounder a third rounder and Tyler Toffoli sending all this over to Columbus in order to get the first overall pick and we all know who the first overall pick is it's Connor Bedard but I guess this deal is not going to be happening I don't want to give up two first round picks or do I because how good of a team are we going to be next season because right now this pick has a ton of trade value if I were to offer this over to the Columbus Blue Jackets would they say yes they're saying no I'll throw in a third round pick but that's the most I'm willing to do I mean that's a complete lie I will throw a second rounder in if I have to I'm going to offer this over they're still saying no I'll give you a second rounder and then I'm calling it a day here so here we go the 36th overall pick a third rounder a future first Tower to Foley for the first overall pick they're saying no I'll throw in another third rounder I'm just yapping at this point. I'm saying I'm not going to throw in any more picks, and then I continue to throw in more picks. Is this going to be enough for the first overall? You know what? I was offering way too much anyway. I'm fine with not getting the first overall. So here we go with the third overall pick. I'm going to be going with this guy who's projected third. Normally, I would go with Leo Carlson because then we know exactly what we're getting. But this guy's projected third overall. He's a playmaker. I wouldn't mind bringing him to the team. So that's who we're going to be drafting. An 80 overall playmaker to start off the rebuild here. That's some great drafting. Then again, that wasn't true drafting because, I mean, it was the third overall pick. Anyone can make a third overall selection. So I'm not even going to lie. The draft right now is actually incredibly mid. So I'm going to be sending our second rounder over to the Cal 
Calgary Flames for a future second and a sixth round pick. I don't want to waste any draft picks on 70 potential players because that's exactly what we're going to be getting here. A fifth and a seventh rounder, I'm going to be packaging that up next. How many draft picks can we get here? A third rounder from the Buffalo Sabres, I'll take it. And then for this sixth rounder, can we get a future fifth or something? I guess we can. That's exactly what we're doing. The 168th overall for a future fifth rounder. We're basically making one selection here and that's what we're going to be rocking with because we just acquired a ton of great assets here and we're going to be trading some of them that's for sure now we have a couple guys here on expiring contracts and when i say a couple i mean like seven some of them aren't going to be coming back to the team but some of them definitely are and we're starting with ryan o'reilly here what type of a contract is he looking for i can definitely work with this so instead of 5.6 million how about we do 4.9 for the next three years i think that's a good deal for both sides the next deal i'm handing out is going to max domi four million dollars for the next three years as long as he can fit on the second line if he can't fit there then he's going to be shipped out cal foot i definitely have no problem with doing 1.5 for the next three years that's a pretty solid contract Caleb jones i'll definitely do something similar with you 1.65 for the next three another fantastic deal for us Clem Costin, you're going to be a great bomb six piece for us. So 1.4 for the next three. I love that contract. And Torpchenko, you know what? I'm giving you a five-year extension here because I want to keep you here for the rest of the rebuild. And we'll do 1.3 for the next five years. You're going to be the face of this franchise. I'm making you the captain. You were the first selection for this team. People don't even understand the intangibles you're bringing to this team. Meanwhile, Connor Sheary and Brett Ritchie, I'm going to be letting both of these guys walk. I just selected them so I wouldn't have to take on somebody else's contract, basically. I mean, technically, Brett Ritchie didn't come from the expansion draft. I acquired him through trade, but it doesn't matter. He's not coming back to the team. Connor Sheary's not coming back to the team, but the rest of these guys, they're all joined the team. As long as they accept their deals, and a lot of them are not accepting their deals, that's not the greatest start in the world. Okay, basically two players accepted contracts. I guess we have to change these offers up a little bit. So Ryan O'Reilly, 5.1 for the next three. I feel like that's a fair contract for you. Max Domi, you didn't want to do 4 million or whatever I offered you. How about 4.3 for the next three? I mean, that works for both sides here. As long as you're reasonable, I'll bring you back. And Caleb Jones, what I offer you? I don't even recall, but I'll do 1.7 for the next three. I think I did 1.6 and you said no to that. I don't know why you'd say no to 1.6, but you know what? We're not going to worry about it. We got the other three guys locked down. The team's ready to roll. Let's get ready for some big moves in free agency. I am literally the stupidest person alive. Yeah, Jeremy Swayman. Probably wouldn't hurt if I gave you a contract, huh? I'll give you 5.6 for the next five years. I'm going to give you exactly what you want just because I wait until the final day of free agency. I completely forgot to give this man a contract. What am I thinking? He's accepting the deal. Jeremy Swayman sticking on the team. I almost lost Jeremy Swayman because I was not paying attention. That would have sucked. Now that we finished up with the re-sign phase, we got to give out some extensions and we're going to start with Forsling, 4.5 for the next four years. That will keep him around for the entire rebuild. Ryan Hartman, depending on what you're asking for, I wouldn't mind keeping you around 3.6 for the next two years. If you accept 3.2, then you can come back to the team. Capo Caco, I'm going to be completely honest. I see the potential with you, so I'll do a four-year deal at 2.4 million. If you can turn out to be like an 85, 86 overall player for us, then this contract's definitely going to be worth it. I mean, even if you can't become an 86 overall, at an 84 overall, that contract's worth it. Maybe even an 82. You might be worth that type of money right now. Blake Lazard, I'll do a three-year deal with you. For what you're going to be providing for the bottom six, I think that's a fair contract. Beauvillier, I actually love this contract right here. 2.5 for the next three years. You're an 82 overall at 26 years old. I don't think you're going to be developing too much more, but it's a lot cheaper than what your current contract is, so I'm not going to complain. And I think the final extension we're going to give out here is going to go to William Carrier. We'll do 2.3 for the next two years. Basically, we're going to have the same team for the next three years. Everyone's under contract here. We're going to lose the odd player, but I'm perfectly fine with that. Some of these guys will sign later in the season but for right now we got the important pieces coming back however there is actually one more extension i want to give out dustin wolf where are you looking for 2.1 for the next two years we can make that work now there isn't a ton of superstars here in free agency but tower bertuzzi is one of the better players 5.9 for the next three years he's gonna be playing some top line minutes for us i think he can be a very crucial piece to this team when it comes to winning a stanley cup now i do think we should make one trade before we head into the season so i'm going to ship tower to fully over to the boston bruins you're going to pick up pavel zaka and jake debrusque two guys that are going to be able to pick up a couple goals for us they're going to allow our bottom six to be even better and our top six is going to be pretty strong as well i think this is a smart deal for us i'm very surprised they're accepting this the way they are we probably could have got a couple picks but you know what i'm perfectly fine with how the team's looking and i'm ready for us to win a stanley cup in year number one i mean then again the odds of that happening are incredibly low but we're definitely going to be a competitive team that's for sure as long as tyler bertuzzi joins the team here then things are going to be looking fantastic a lot of guys are going to be accepting their contracts here you love to see that and tyler bertuzzi we don't have the cap space for him anymore. That is actually awful. 
All right, we're not making any free agent signings because I traded for Jake DeBrus and Pavel Zaka. Probably should have known that we would have absolutely no cap space, but you know what? It is what it is. We're going to win a Stanley Cup. I'm perfectly fine with the team we have here. I don't know why I'm gassing the team up as much as I am. We're an expansion team. Vegas was an anomaly. How did Seattle do in their very first season? Not that great. They were one of the worst teams in the entire league. But for some reason, I think that this team right here is going to win a Stanley Cup. That's not happening. So I've rearranged the lines a little bit. So we're getting a plus two overall boost on the first line, which is going to be Max Domi, Riley Smith, and Jake DeBrusque. On the second, it's going to be Pavel Zaka, Ryan O'Reilly, and Capo Caco. The bottom six, though, these guys have zero line fit whatsoever. We're not going to be able to score in our bottom six. We're going to be allowing a ton of goals. I think that's the thing that's going to be hurting us the most this season. We really don't have a good coach for what this team is. Defensively, though, we're actually fantastic. Samuel Gerard, Romanov, Chernak, Forsling, Brady Shea, Bo Quist. We have an incredible defense here. We're definitely going to be able to keep the puck out of our net, and we're also going to be producing a lot offensively here. And to cap it all off, of course, we have a fantastic goaltending tandem and Jeremy Swam is going to be leading the way for us in 86 overall we're only paying this man like 5.6 million for the next five years that's an incredible deal for what his numbers are going to be he's going to develop into an 88 overall goaltender he's going to be on one of the greatest contracts in the league this team's set up for success right now well, maybe not right now because we don't have a bottom six that has any line fits. So we're probably going to struggle this season. It's probably a good thing that we didn't trade our first round pick away. But you know what? We're going to see what happens. We're going to be a competitive team. That's for sure. Definitely not making the playoffs or we shouldn't make the playoffs, but we shouldn't be bottom three in the entire league. My prediction for the trade deadline, we're going to be 22nd in the entire league. So not one of the best, but certainly not one of the worst. Now I'd say things are currently going exactly according to plan. No surprises here. We're not one of the best, but not one of the worst. We're literally mid, 15th in the entire league, 32, 25, and 6. Our offense definitely isn't spectacular by any means, but we do have one of the best defenses in the entire league. So if we can fix the goal scoring, we're going to be one of the best for sure. And to be fair, when we looked at our forward core, we knew it was weak. Max Domi, 60 points. Riley Smith, 45. Gerard, 45. Jake DeBrusque, 40. We definitely need to work on a few things here. Well, the goaltending numbers, pretty good. I can't complain. Jeremy Swayman, 28 wins, one shot, a 916 to 260. Bro's locked in right now. Once we start scoring the puck a bit more, you're going to be a 50 win goaltender. So I'm cooking up a deal to get Seth Jarvis. Jake DeBrusque, 50% retained. Brady Shea, 50% retained. We're getting Seth Jarvis a second rounder and we need to take on Jonathan Drouin just so we can get the caps to work here. I'm going to send this over. They're saying no. We might not be able to get a second rounder in this deal, but we should be able to get a third or something. I'm not accepting this deal until we get a pick. So maybe two third rounders will be enough. They're going to say no to two third rounders. Maybe we can get one. You have to give me some type of pick. There we go. We got Seth Jarvis a third round pick. Jarvis is definitely going to be helping the scoring on this team. Jake DeBrus just didn't have the greatest fit here. We're probably not going to be a great team again next season, but you know what? We're slowly going to bring in some good scorers. I think the plan over the offseason is to bring in another elite sniper, get a lot of goal scoring on this team. Clearly, our defense is good enough, but we know where our weakness is, and that's definitely goal scoring. Now, it's safe to say I'm incredibly impressed with the Quebec Nordiques right now. Ninth in the entire league with a 44, 29, and 9 record. Our offense really turned it around, averaging over three goals per game. Our defense defense might be the best in the entire league. It's got to be one of the best. Our defense is third in the entire league. If we can step it up in the postseason, we might be able to win in year number one. I highly doubt that's going to happen, but you just never know. No, seriously though, if we won in year number one, I'll do a face reveal. No cap. I'll do a face reveal at the end of this video. It wouldn't make sense, but you know what? I would do it. Max Domi, 30 goals, 49 helpers. He's got 79 points. Riley Smith, 62 points. Samuel Gerrard, 61. This team is looking pretty good. And Seth Jarvis, I'm kind of curious to see what you did since joining the team. 12 points in 19 games, not necessarily the greatest numbers in the world, but hey, you helped spark some scoring here, so it couldn't have been that bad. Meanwhile, the goaltending situation, we already know Jeremy Swayman's him. 38 wins, 3 shouts, and 917 at 256. Put numbers like this up in the postseason, and we might be heading home with a Stanley Cup sooner than we thought. But I gotta stop gassing this team up. We finished ninth in the entire league. We're not even one of the top three teams in the league, but for some reason, I think we're ready to win a Stanley Cup right now. We have the Boston Bruins in the first round. I already know this is gonna be a tough matchup. Let's take a game by game. I'm looking too far ahead. So at first, I thought we were going to get swept here, but we're winning game three and game four to even this series up. Game five, someone's going to be taking the lead, and it looks like it's going to be the Boston Bruins. Can we respond here in game number six and force a game seven? Doesn't look like it. We're going to be falling six to one here. I'm not necessarily overly surprised we lost in the first round here. If we're being honest, we shouldn't have even made the playoffs. So it turns out the Boston Bruins are a better team than I expected. They won the Stanley Cup, defeating the San Jose Sharks of all teams in the Stanley Cup final. You heard me right. 2024 San Jose Sharks Stanley Cup 
Cup final. What kind of universe are we living in? Because I don't want to be here. In the postseason, we didn't necessarily have a ton of great performers, but Max Domi's leading the way. Seven points in six games here. Let Jeremy Swayman, what was he up to? Two wins, one shout, a 903 and a 331. These numbers certainly aren't the best, but we weren't playing that great in front of you, so I can't expect too much more than this. However, if you put up numbers like this next season, then we're going to have an issue. Now that the postseason's wrapped up here, we can focus on some contracts and Seth Jarvis 3.4 for the next five years. I'm not against that deal whatsoever, especially if you're playing top six minutes. Peyton Krebs, on the other hand, I'm actually kind of happy that you lowered your asking price. At the beginning of the season, he won 3.5 million per year. Now we're doing 1.7. Same with Kunin, 1.5 for next season. That's a great deal in my eyes. And then Yuko Vakananen, I definitely said that wrong. 1.2 for the next two years. I think you can be a third pairing guy for us next season. So I'm giving extensions to everyone on this team, except for Brown here. He's 30 years old. He's dropped to a 79 overall. He's not that guy. So there's no point bringing him back. And I don't believe he has any trade value. So it's not even like we can re-sign him and then trade him away. So as we know, I have a ton of picks in the upcoming draft here. So we better get some good prospects. And we're going to start with the 50 8th overall is I'm going to be securing a low lead potential two-way forward. So I'm not going to lie, I took a look at the draft and there is no good prospects here, but I can trade a third rounder and a fourth over to the Boston Bruins and I can get Potra in a third round pick. I'm not even debating that deal. It's being accepted immediately. The next deal we're making is two third rounders over to the Anaheim Ducks. Frank Vitrano and a fourth round pick is going to be acquired here. Frank Vitrano is definitely going to be helping the scoring on this team because that's one of our weaknesses. The trades are going to continue here as we're getting a future third round pick from the Buffalo Sabres. And I'm going to keep on making trades because the prospects here are bad and third rounders can be pretty valuable in trades. And I'm going to be acquiring one from the Calgary Flames. And to finish it all off, who wants a future sixth round pick here? I guess the Arizona Coyotes do as they'll give me a future sixth. I'm willing to make this deal any day of the week. So after having all of those picks, this is how many selections we made. We made four. We entered the draft with like 11 or 12 picks and we only made four selections. That tells you how bad the draft is because when there's good prospects available, I can find them. So I guess Potra is not that man because he's a 69 overall with top nine potential. For some reason, when I made that trade, I read it as high top six potential because that's what he normally is. But nope, we got 69 overall Matt Patra. It's not ideal. So after not having to make any moves during the re-sign phase, we got to bring some important pieces back to the team. And we're going to start with Boquist here. He's one of our good defensemen. And right now, the defensive core on our team is absolutely incredible. And I don't want to screw that up. So I got to make sure he rejoins the team. We'll do 2.4 for the next three years. And speaking of defensemen, Romanoff, you got to come back to the team as well. I'll do 4.5 for the next three with you. The defensive core is going to be the same for all three years of this rebuild. Actually, that's a lie because we traded Brady Shea last season, but five of the six guys are always going to be the same. That is also probably a lie because if I can trade for a superstar defenseman on a one-way contract in order for us to win a Stanley Cup, then I will do that. All right, so we got to make some big changes to this team. Not only was the top six not great last season, but neither was the bottom six. And Mason McTavish is a perfect fit on the third line, so we're going to be acquired him for Ryan O'Reilly. I mean, I was going to try to get a third rounder as well, but I guess that's not going to be happening. We're just going to be going one for one here, but even that's not enough, which shouldn't really be a surprise. So I'll throw a seventh rounder into this deal and we're going to get it done. Ryan O'Reilly in a seventh rounder for Mason McTavish. That's a great deal in my eyes. Now, as long as we can sign him to a reasonable contract for next season, then things will be great. $5 million works for me. And although $5 million works for me, I'll do 4.4 because if we can save some money, then I'll do that. So 4.4 for the next four for 86 overall Mason McTavish. Tavish, that's a great deal. That contract might be a bit expensive for a third line guy, but if he produces results, then what can I complain about? So there's one thing that this team needs right now, and that's goal scoring. And Jake Getzel, he can definitely provide that for us. 10.2 million for the next six years. So far, no one's been able to offer him a contract because they don't have enough cap space, but we do. And if Jake Getzel accepts this deal, then I think we're true contenders. And just like that, Jake Getzel, welcome to the Quebec Nordiques. This is a massive pickup for our team. It's going to solve our goal scoring issue but we're not done making moves here. So if we're going to acquire a guy like Jake Getzel, then we need a playmaker for him. And Dylan Strom can definitely be that guy for us. An 84 overall, 27 years old. He's going to continue to keep on getting better. So Riley Smith and a third rounder is off to Washington and Dylan Strom is going to be joining the team here. I guess not. A third rounder is not going to be enough, but you know it will be enough. A second rounder. And just like that, the deal is completed. For some reason, our second round pick had a ton of trade value. I have no clue why. We're going to be a good team this season. That's going to be like the 60th overall pick. So the main reason I'm making this trade 
trade right here is I want to pick up Hoglander for the third line because there's a good chance that he could fit there. He's only an A3 overall right now, but we already know he develops into an absolute stud. And we're also picking up Rodriguez in this deal just so we can make the caps work. I'm sending this over to Vancouver. They're saying yes immediately, and we got the guy we needed. Now, I honestly thought I was done making deals here, but I'm actually not. Capo Caco, I'm sending you over to the Philadelphia Flyers, and we're getting Owen Tippett in a third round pick. Right now, Capo Caco actually has a fair amount of trade value, and he's going to allow this deal to happen. And we're not done with the trades here because Peyton Krebs and Sean Lawton, neither of you guys are playing for the team right now. You're both actually in the AHL. So I'm going to send you over to the Toronto Maple Leafs. We're going to try to pick up two third rounders in Adam Henrique. The only reason I'm picking up Adam Henrique here is supposedly he can play on the bottom six. So if he can be our fourth line center and have a good line fit, then I think that's an upgrade for us. We're also ditching two contracts I don't really want. That's the main reason I'm making this deal. And we're not done here because I got to continue to clear up cap space. Frank Vitrano, I was hoping that you'd be able to fit on the bottom six here, but apparently that's not happening. So I'm shipping you over to the Winnipeg Jets for a fourth rounder. And I'm not done there because Beauvillier, you also have to be shipped out and you're off to the Toronto Maple Leafs for a sixth and seventh rounder. We have way too many guys on one-way contracts that are playing in the AHL. I don't want to be holding on to these cap hits, so we got to get rid of some players. So here we go with year number two. Strom, Getzel, and Domi are going to be holding down that first line with a plus two boost. Pavel Zaka, our young rookie that we drafted third overall, and Owen Tipper are holding down the second for a plus two boost as well. Seth Jarvis, McTavish, and Hoglander are on the third line. They're getting a plus one. Well, William Carrier, Adam Henrique, and Torpchenko, they're holding it down the fourth line. A plus one boost for them. I think Torpchenko was the missing piece last season. The dude's an absolute beast. I can't believe I had him in the AHL. I was really letting this team down by making that move. Defensively, we're absolutely loaded here here plus one boost on the third pairing plus one on the second and then a plus three on the top pairing and on top of all those amazing defensemen we also have an 88 overall Jeremy Swayman in between the pipes for us he has high star potential that's going to be elite by the end of the season and you know what else is going to be elite the Quebec Nordiques so let's go ahead simulate through the season we'll get to the trade deadline make a couple moves to improve this team and then win ourselves a Stanley Cup in year number two should we be winning a Stanley Cup in year number two here absolutely not but with the way the rebuild's been going this team's looking fantastic we might have to speed up the process a little bit here. So things are definitely looking amazing for the Quebec Nordiques right now. We're sixth in the entire league with a 36-21-6 record. Our offense still isn't the best in the world, but look at that defense. 2.9 goals allowed. That's definitely one of the best in the entire league. I mean, maybe not because I can see like three teams right here that are better than us. But you know what? We're not going to worry about that right now. Now the top guys are definitely showing out for us. Dylan Strom, 59 points. Jake Getzel, 56. But more importantly, he's got 33 goals so far. Also our young rookie, he's got 53 points here in 63 games. He's going to be an absolute beast next season. Probably one of the best in the entire league. Max Domi, 48 points. The team's looking absolutely great. And you know what else is great? The goaltending. Jeremy Swayman, 28 wins, 4 shots, a 9-11, and a 276. I don't think we're going to be winning this season. Next season, it's going to be iffy. But the year after that, that's when we really start competing. Season number four in the rebuild, that's when we're top three in the entire league. Also, I do want to mention Austin Matthews is on the trade block here. He's only getting paid $8.8 .8 million. If we were able to somehow get him on this team, I would make this deal, but it's going to be impossible. But in saying that, what would it actually take to get Austin Matthews? So here's Jake Getzel, a first rounder, another first rounder, a second and a third for Austin Matthews. I'm going to offer that over. That's literally the best that we can offer. I'm not overly surprised they said no, but I definitely had to try. So I'm taking a look at who's available here on the trade block, and there's nothing really that's piquing my interest. So I don't want to go all out this season if we're not going to be able to win. So I don't think we're going to make any moves here, and we're just going to get ready for the playoffs. Right now, we're one of the best teams in the entire league, so we're going to finish out strong, make the playoffs. Are we going to be competing with the top teams in the league? Definitely not. But next season, things are certainly getting crazy. But next season, that's when things are going to get crazy. So we're at the end of the season here, but we have something a bit more important and that's bringing back Hoglander 2.8 for the next three that'll keep him around for the rest of the rebuild the rest of these guys here I'm perfectly fine with letting walk with the season wrapping up here the Quebec Nordiques are looking great sixth in the entire league 46 29 and 7 it only took us two seasons to become a top 10 team the offense absolutely flying while the defense actually a bit of a step back here allowing over three goals per game we definitely don't want that so the plus minus for a lot of these guys isn't necessarily the greatest in the world. Jake Getzel, he had 74 points, minus 12. Dylan Strom, 72 points, minus 14. Max Domi, 62 points, minus 11. We can't have that. If we want to be one of the best in the entire league, our top guys need to be showing out. And Jeremy Swayman, what do your numbers look like? 36 wins, 4 shots, a 905, and a 291. Hey, you're one of our top performers. You showed out. I can't complain about this. But you know what I can't complain about? Who we're matching up against in the first round? It's the Boston Bruins once again. But you know Know what we're a different team this time around the quebec nordiques are a much better team all around we got a chip on our shoulder coming into this postseason boston they're looking to repeat all the pressures on them meanwhile with us 
we have no pressure here whatsoever. We know we're all coming back next season. We know the team's going to be even better. So we just got to take this one day at a time. Okay, Boston had all the pressure on them and somehow we're the team folding. We've been shut out in two of the four games so far. We're not looking that great. Game number five here, we're losing in overtime. How did we perform worse in year number two than year number one? We were definitely a better team this time around. But in the postseason, we choked. So things definitely didn't go our way here. A first round exit in five games. We didn't even put up much of a fight. But you know what? That's perfectly fine because things are about to change here. We're going to make some difficult moves during the offseason. We're going to be walking away from some players. And one of those players just happens to be our top scorer here in the postseason, Max Domi. Six points in five games. He's an 85 overall. He had a great run with us. But you know what? I think we need an upgrade here. We also don't need two playmakers on the first line. Like Max Domi, he's a playmaker playing alongside Dylan Strom, another playmaker. Let's bring in a different player that plays a different role. Meanwhile, Jeremy Swayman, I don't even want to look at your numbers, but I will. Yeah, I'm going to pretend those don't exist. Yeah, I believe Jeremy Swayman had a 920 and a 230, but we just didn't show up offensively. Now, I did say I would trade you if you put up numbers like that, but I was just straight capping. I'm not trading you. All right, so we basically have to trade every single pick here because not only are there zero good prospects, but I actually can't hire any good scouts. The best scouts available for me to sign, C overall scouts. Like literally the only scouts available to hire are C overalls. There's nothing higher for some reason. So with the 13 picks we did have, we traded all of them away and made one selection. That tells you how bad the draft was. All right, so we're in the re-sign phase, and I don't want to bring any of these guys back, so we're going to be letting all of them walk, except for Zadina. I'll actually qualify him, and then I'll trade him away. And then Kozak, I'll also qualify you and trade you away if you have any value whatsoever. I mean, if either of you guys want to accept a two-way contract, then I have no issue with that. Kozak, here you go. Here's a two-way contract. And Zadina, would you be willing to accept a two-way contract? All right, we're bringing both of these guys back. All right, so things are definitely going to be changing here because Max Dome, he's up to an 87 overall. And I was talking about how I was going to be trading him. That hasn't changed because I just saw what this man wants for a contract extension. 7.2 million for the next six years. So that's not happening. So Max Domi, you're going to be traded. But the best part about you going up to an 87, you have more trade value now. So we're going to be bringing in a star player. All right, so you know the rules when it comes to rebuilds. They're not realistic in the slightest. So Max Domi, a second and third rounder, off to the Dallas Stars, and we're getting Rupe hints. I honestly thought this would be enough, but you know what? We have so many draft picks to work with here. This is going to be easy. Here's another third round pick. If I have to throw in a second, I will. But I'll trade third rounders away like they're nothing. You know what? Here's another second rounder. All of this for Rupe hints, and that's still not enough. I'm actually really surprised about that. So I'll take those third rounders out, and I'll add another second rounder just like that. Here's three second rounders in Max Domi. That's still not enough. If I have to throw in a first rounder, I will, but I don't really want to. So here's four second rounders in Max Domi for Rupe Hints. Y'all are bugging. And since y'all are bugging so much, a first, a second, and Max Domi for Rupe Hints. Okay, when I give you the first rounder, you immediately say yes. But the four second rounders that combine for more value than the first? No, we can't do that. Dallas is bugging. But hey, we got Rupe Hens. All right, and then for our next move, we're going to be picking up Chandler Stevenson, who's on an incredible contract here, under $6 million, and he's an 87 overall. He's got X factors. He's going to play bottom six minutes for us. And yes, I'm going to be paying someone who's playing bottom six minutes $6 million. But you know what? We have a weakness here on the bottom six, and we got to fix it. I'm surprised this isn't enough. I'm trading Ryan Hartman just so we can make the contracts work here. I'm not even looking at what draft picks I'm trading away. All I know is I'm giving them third round picks, but apparently third round picks are not enough. Doesn't really make sense to me, so here's a second rounder. Two second rounders, two third rounders, and Ryan Hartman for Chandler Stevenson. Why don't y'all accept this deal? If I take Ryan Hartman out of this deal, will you accept it then? I thought maybe it's just because they didn't want his contract, but you just never know nowadays. Here's a third rounder from the Philadelphia Flyers. So a ton of draft picks and we're getting this deal done. So I guess they just didn't want Ryan Hartman. It's also kind of wild with all the trades I've done, we still have a ton of draft picks left over. And you know what? We're about to acquire some more because Ryan Hartman, I'm going to trade you away to a team and we're going to get some more draft picks. Two fourth rounders from the Boston Bruins. That works for me. So right now, I have a ton of confidence in our Quebec Nordiques. Not only do we not have a ton of super valuable players on expiring contracts, so not only are they going to be here for this season, but they're also going to be here for next season. We have a lot of cap space to work with right now. Like if we were to sign Clem Costin and bring him back for next season, we have $9 million to work with. The salary cap is going to continue to go up, so we might even have $12 million next season. We only need to bring back three players next season, and we have $12 million to work with. 
their bottom six guys as well. So we're not going to be spending a lot of money here. This team's going to be even better and wait till you see our roster for this season because it's looking elite. And in just three seasons, here's the roster we've crafted up. Dylan Strom, Rupe Hintz, Jake Getz on the first line, Owen Tippett, our young prospect, still haven't learned how to say his name, and Pavel Zaka on the second line. They're getting a plus two boost as well. Chandler Stevenson, Mason McTavish, Hoglander, plus two boost on the third line, and then Jarvis, Henrique, and Carrier are going to round it out on the fourth line. You know Stick on the Ice has absolutely no clue how to say somebody's name when he pulls up Google Trans translate and has to translate for himself so this is a russian name and i'm listening to the russian google translate and i cannot tell you how to pronounce this i'm going to turn it on for you guys to listen to Prakharkin. i don't even know what that is like i cannot even comprehend how to say that but i can say this Prokerkin. so Prokerkin is the guy for the second line am i gonna remember how to say this name in about 20 seconds absolutely not but you know what he's on the team he holds it down the second line we also have him under contract for next season as well, so we don't even have to worry about paying him. Right now, the team's incredible. The defense is the same guys as usual, and they're looking absolutely fantastic. While well, the is going to see Jeremy Swayman actually dropping two overalls to an 86, I guess that postseason performance had really affected his overall. But you know what? I'm not too worried because we've seen what this man's done in previous videos. I'm ready for him to hit that elite potential and lead us to a Stanley Cup. So the Quebec Nordiques are locked in. Second in the entire league here at the trade deadline. 41, 15, and 7. An offense that produces goals like crazy. 3.68 while the defense fantastic 2.59 you would think 2.59 would be the best in the entire league and then there's the florida panthers who are not only better defensively but also better offensively i've built a near perfect team here and somehow florida is still better how does that work i have no clue the one good thing is the big time players are making big time plays dylan strom 64 points proker kin he's got 63 points yes i remember the name and definitely didn't go back to google translate mctavish 54 jake getzel 54 while the goal tending numbers you already know they're spectacular 35 wins four shots a 920 and a 250 for jeremy swayman the best numbers he's seen so far in this video and now it's time to make the team a bit better i mean we'll make the team better if that's possible i think what we're missing is a fourth line center if we're able to acquire one of those then i think we'll be set so we are going to be making one trade here the deadline joseph and a third rounder is going to be sent over to the columbus blue jackets i just want to get rid of his contract and sam lafferty 81 overall welcome to the team you're going to be playing some bottom six minutes well the plan is for you to play some bottom six minutes are you going to be suiting up on the bottom six we're about to find that out so the plan is adam henrique's going to be leaving the lineup here we're going to be putting sam lafferty in instead lafferty will also probably be coming back next season because we have him under contract i just wanted to get a bit younger on the fourth line that was the main reason for making this move okay so we're either winning a stanley cup this season or a stanley cup next season it's one of the two quebec's first in the entire league with a 58 17 and 7 record an offense that's absolutely flying and a defense that's the best in the entire league at the trade deadline florida was better than us in both of these categories at the end of the season things have changed and we're better than them in both the quebec nordiques are back and they're here to stay pro group can continues to prove he's one of the best in the entire game 88 points here 38 goals 50 helpers dylan strom 79 points mason mctavish 68 what a great pickup he was for the third line jake getzel 66 with only 26 goals but chandler stevenson another fantastic pickup 25 goals 66 points the offense is absolutely unstoppable on this team but you know what else is unstoppable jeremy swayman 51 wins five shots and 922 and a 242 i said at some point in this video jeremy swayman would pick up 50 wins and here we are just three seasons in and to make things even better which team's not going to be making the playoffs this time around the boston bruins we don't have to worry about matching up against them in the first round we're taking on the montreal canadians and although we're a lot better than the montreal canadians on paper things aren't really going our way so far we split the series two games apiece but in game five we're showing up a massive 7-4 victory and ideally we close it out in game number six here that's exactly what's happening a massive 3 one victory for the boys and we're off to the second round so we've moved on to the second round and it's time to take on another canadian team this time it's going to be the ottawa senators but i refuse to lose to the ottawa senators when was the last time this team had a good season not like seriously we're in the year 2026 at this point when was the last time ottawa was actually good we're going back to like 2017. It's been a decade since this team was relevant. No, but in all seriousness, there is no reason that the Ottawa Senators should be as bad as they are right now. Like in all seriousness, Ottawa, you have so many amazing, young, talented players. How are y'all bottom five in the league right now? You just keep making bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. Meanwhile, we're sweeping them in a quick four game series. So their lack of success is going to continue here. After sweeping Ottawa, we reached the conference finals and really the New York Rangers shouldn't be able to put up much of a fight 
fight against us. They were like a 41 win team during the regular season, but then again, they've made all the way to the conference finals, so we can't sleep on them. And like I said, we can't sleep on the New York Rangers because they're really competing with us. Currently, the series is split two games apiece. Game five is going to be massive for us, and we're going to be dropping that one three to nothing. We have to show out here in game six. We got to get back into this series, and unfortunately, that's not going to be happening. An OT loss in game number six. You hate to see it, you really do. The only reason this loss doesn't hurt a ton is I know this entire team's coming back next season. We're going to be even better, and I think they just swept the Oilers for the Stanley Cup because there's no reason the playoffs should be over this quick. And it looks like that's exactly what happened. The New York Rangers are sweeping the Edmonton Oilers. The Rangers had no business making it all the way to the Stanley Cup final. This team went 16 and 4, and they were a 41 win team. But you know what? Those things happen, and now it's time to get ready for next season, and the Quebec Nordiques are bringing everyone back. So you already know we're going to be at the top of the league. And it's pretty clear why we didn't win a Stanley Cup this season. The big time players were not making big time plays. Adam Boquist is leading the team in scoring with 12 points. Bro's playing third pairing minutes and he led the team in points. This can't be happening. While well, Jeremy Swayman, the numbers, oh my god, we let you down. We really let Jeremy Swayman down. 10 wins, 2 shouts, a 927 and a 218, and we still couldn't win with him. But look at those X factors. He's going to have all those for next season. He's a 90 overall. Yeah, we're hoisting a Stanley Cup next season, no doubt about it. So we moved on to the draft here, and the draft's been going okay so far with 113th overall we got a low elite potential playmaker the rest of the draft though it's been incredibly mid so far so i'm going to package up a sixth and seventh rounder and send it over to the boston bruins and we're going to pick up a third round pick here and we do have another sixth and seventh round pick so i'm going to package those up and they're off to the buffalo sabers for a future third so we brought back a couple guys here cal foot caleb jones clem costin no major names william carrier also is coming back just a bunch of guys for the third pairing defense or bottom six forward core but there actually is one more player i want to bring back that's going to be dustin wolf what type of a contract is he looking for 800k for one season i can definitely do that now things are definitely going to get very difficult for this team next season because we have a ton of big time players needing to get paid how we're going to be able to afford all these guys i have absolutely no clue but this right here definitely not it Prokurkin, i would love to bring you back but at 11 million dollars for the next four years i don't think that's the move pavel zaka what are you looking for 6.1 i mean that's not necessarily the worst in the world samuel gerard i know for a fact he's going to be looking for a bag eight million dollars Dollars. There's definitely going to be some changes happening over the next year or two. And I think we will start with Prokurkin because, of course, he's an incredibly important piece to this team. And we're going to do 9.75 for the next four years. That will save a bit of money for us. And that means we're going to have $10 million to work with. And with part of that $10 million, it's going to be going to Samuel Gerard, 7.5 for the next four years. And I think that means we're going to have to let Owen Tippett and Pavel Zaka walk. But that's only if we don't win a Stanley Cup this season. And I think the odds of that happening are pretty high. So we don't really need to make any big signs here, but I am going to try to make one. Rasmus Anderson. 8.1 for next season if we can somehow bring him to the team that's going to improve our defensive core even more the forward core is already good enough yeah this team's winning a stanley cup as long as rasmus anderson joins the team so here we go with our stanley cup season this team looks absolutely incredible the top nine's lowest overall player is going to be hollander and owen tippett tied at an 84 overall that's the lowest overall for our top nine and then the third line we got seth jarvis sam lafferty and william carrier Honestly, you can't beat a forward core better than this one. And with our forward core being that good, you might think that our defense absolutely sucks. Well, that's not the case. Samuel Gerard, Chernak, Boquist, Forsling, Romanov, Anderson. This defense is absolutely incredible. So you might be thinking, well, the goaltending has to be bad. You have to be weak somewhere. Nope, we're perfect. Jeremy Swayman, Dustin Wolf, a 90 overall and an 85 backing him up. An 85 overall is better than some of the starters in the NHL right now. But we have Dustin Wolf, an 85 overall backing up Jeremy Swayman, a 90. If this team plays to their full potential, I fully expect a 60 win season. So enough talk, it's time for the Quebec Nordiques to go on and win themselves the Stanley Cup in year number four here. The rebuild has been going very smoothly so far, and we're hoping that can continue in year number four. So let's simulate the season here, and then get ourselves a superstar at the trade deadline. So I think we might have to make a couple of adjustments here at the trade deadline. We're fourth in the entire league with a 38-23-1 record. The offense is great, I have no issue with that. However, the defense definitely needs some work. The offense here, I'm not concerned about. Everyone putting up some great points while well, the goaltending numbers jeremy swayman what are these looking like how does this even happen y'all remember what his numbers were last season the only difference is we have rasmus anderson on the team 
So you know what that means? Rasmus Anderson, you're being traded. I'm gonna ship you out and we're gonna bring in something else. I don't know what we're gonna bring in, but we gotta change something up here. So maybe this is the move here. Although none of these pieces fit either team's trade block, Rasmus Anderson over to the Calgary Flames. We're gonna get Ryan Lindgren. He's a good defensive defenseman. He can play on the third pairing for us. I think that actually helps our team quite a bit. Because right now, obviously we're lacking defensively and that's where we need our upgrades. We couldn't get a couple of second round picks. So maybe we can get a third and a fourth. If we're not able to get a third and a fourth, actually we don't have to worry about not getting a third and a fourth. That's exactly what we got. So Ryan Lindgren, he's gonna be helping the defense here. I think that's where our weak point was. The forward core, it's good enough. We score a ton of goals. But in saying all that, I think this is the right move. So to finish out the year, the Quebec Nordiques do what they're known for, win games. 50, 30, and two, a great record. Once again, if we had more overtime losses, we probably would have been number one in the entire league. The offense was absolutely flying. 3.67 goals per game, the best in the NHL. While the defense, we dropped that down to a goals against a three. It's not the greatest by any means, but it's definitely not the worst in the entire league. I think that puts us seventh. Seventh in the entire league with the best offense, that's a recipe for success. But you know what isn't a recipe for success? Not having a superstar player on our team. I was kind of expecting a couple of these guys to step up here in the second half of the season. You know, we have a ton of fantastic players, but Rupe Hintz, you're playing first line minutes here, 56 points in 82 games. I'm expecting a lot more from you. Meanwhile, Jeremy Swayman, 42 wins, two shots, a 903 and the goals against a three. I saw what you can do in the postseason. You put up absolutely phenomenal numbers last season. And if you can do that again here, then we just need the offense to perform. Now, but in all seriousness, when the postseason comes around, we either have fantastic offense and poor goaltending or amazing goaltending and poor offense. If we can get both of those things running on all cylinders, then we might go 16-0 in the postseason. But that probably won't be happening because who do we have to take on in the first round? the Boston Bruins. This team's had Quebec's number, but it's time for us to get back. Similar to the last couple times we've matched up against the Boston Bruins in the postseason, it's been a tough one, and so far we split the series two games apiece, so game five is going to be a massive one. Jeremy Swayman, what a game from him. He's picking up the shutout, and ideally he picks up another shutout here in game six, and we close the series out. It's not a shutout, but I'll definitely take a 4-1 victory. And just like that, we're off to the second round. So we've moved on to the second round here, but now we have our toughest task. We've got the Florida Panthers. I believe they finished first in the entire league. It was either them or the Colorado Avalanche. I can't quite remember. All I know is this is going to be a tough one for us. So the Florida Panthers are similar to the Boston Bruins in the fact that this has been a tough series so far. We split the series. But unfortunately, this time around, it looks like we're going to be down 3-2 in this series and not up 3-2. So we got to win game 6 here to force game 7. That's exactly what's happening. A big overtime victory, and we're off to game 7. Winner makes it to the conference finals. So here we go. Game 7, second round. The Quebec Nordiques taking on the Florida Panthers, and Quebec's flying. We won this game. I'm just going to simulate the rest of it. We're up 5-1 to one here in the first period. We're taking it 5-2. to two. This team locked in in the first period. Five goals. You already knew it was over. So we've got by one of the best teams in the entire league and we moved on to the conference finals. We have the Carolina Hurricanes up next, but I do want to point out the Colorado Avalanche did fall in the second round to the Minnesota Wild, so we don't have to worry about them anymore. But then again, Minnesota beat them, so doesn't that make Minnesota better than Colorado? We're not going to use that logic right here. I think we're the best team remaining, so that means we're about to win a Stanley Cup. After the first two games of this series, I honestly thought the Quebec Nordiques were toast. But I should never doubt this team because they're going to show up when it matters most, and hopefully they do that in game five here and take it. A massive 7 nothing victory yeah we've got this all wrapped up we have all the momentum here and we're going to close this out in six games we're off to the stanley cup final it's quebec versus edmonton and all canadian matchup so it's Quebec versus Edmonton. The winner is getting the Stanley Cup here. We're going to simulate through the first four games. And ideally, we lock in here. And that's exactly what we're doing. A sweep over the Edmonton Oilers to win the Stanley Cup. And just four years ago, we drafted this team through the expansion draft. And here we are, Stanley Cup champions. So there's two main reasons why we won the Stanley Cup. The big-time players made big-time plays in big-time games. Prokerkin, 32 points. Jake Getzel, 28. Samuel Gerrard, 25. Dylan Strom, 22. These boys were locked in. And Jeremy Swayman, 16 wins two shouts a 919 to 254 without this man we're definitely not winning a stanley cup and i do want to point out what his regular season numbers were a 903 and a goals against a three but when the postseason came around you already know he's going to be stepping up so we turned quebec into stanley cup champions it only took us four seasons here and if you made to the end of the video comment pro Kirkin, because this man was one of our first ever draft picks selected third overall and without him we're not winning a stanley cup here he really became the face of the franchise Torpachenko showed him the way, and he took full advantage of that. 